Allow our friends. It is sometimes overlooked by Baha'is, but side by side with the festival of Rizwan, the declaration of the Bab is given the status of the most great festival. Although the dispensation of the Bab was brief, it was nothing short of dramatic and in fact pivotal in the story of the Baha'i faith. The writings of both Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha have drawn parallels between the Bab and the Herald of Christ, John the Baptist, recognizing that the Bab was not just a forerunner, but an independent prophet of God. Shoghi Effendi wrote, It is their firm belief that no matter how short the duration of his dispensation, and however brief the period of the operation of his laws, the Bab hath been endowed with a potency such as no founder of any of the past religions was, in the providence of the Almighty, allowed to possess. That he was not merely the precursor of the revelation of Baha'u'llah, that he was more than a divinely inspired personage, that his was the station of an independent, self-sufficient manifestation of God is abundantly demonstrated by himself, is affirmed in unmistakable terms by Baha'u'llah. To give us a glimpse of the potency of the Bab's revelation that is being referred to, we take a look at Baha'u'llah's description which refers to a hadith written in the third century of Islam. The Qa'im in this passage refers to the Bab. I quote, Knowledge is twenty and seven letters. All that the prophets have revealed are two letters thereof. No man thus far hath known more than these two letters. But when the Qa'im shall arise, he will cause the remaining twenty and five letters to be made manifest. Baha'u'llah adds, Behold, how great and lofty his station. Of his revelation, the prophets of God, his saints and chosen ones, have either not been informed or in pursuance of God's inscrutable decree, they have not disclosed. The dispensation of the Bab is filled with instances of fulfillment of prophecy, tales of heroism, and miracles. The story of the declaration itself would, however, be incomplete without reference to one whom the revelation was first declared, Mullah Hussein. In celebrating this occasion, we often begin our recollection with Mullah Hussein arriving at the gates of Shiraz and meeting with a youth wearing a green turban and receiving a loving embrace. Unlike dispensations of the past, we are fortunate enough to have a detailed depiction of that event told from the eyes of Mullah Hussein and recorded across six pages in Nabil's narrative. We often recall how Mullah Hussein was seated for tea and invited to pray with His Holiness the Bab before describing to him the object of his search and receiving that powerful response. Behold, all these signs are manifest in me. We learn how even the most devoted first believer of the faith attempted then to test his master within his limited standards by asking the Bab first to unravel hidden learnings of Sheikh Ahmad and Seed Kazim and then reveal a commentary on the Suri of Joseph both of which the Bab obliged, but followed soon after with a warning. Had you not been my guest, your position would have been a grievous one. It is for God to test his servants, and not for his servants to judge him in accordance with their deficient standards. We remember how, although filled with vigour, 
by the revelation described as a dazzling splendor and a crushing force. The Bab forbade Mullah Hussein to speak of the declaration until the remaining letters of the living had found the faith. And in this short window, Mullah Hussein enjoyed a perfect companionship with the Bab. He described, During those days, I was summoned to visit the Bab on several occasions. Every time I visited him, I spent the entire night in his presence. Wakeful until dawn, I sat at his feet, fascinated by the charm of his utterance and oblivious of the world and its cares. How rapidly those precious hours flew by. At each daybreak, I would reluctantly withdraw from his presence. How eagerly in those days I looked forward to the approach of the evening hour. With what feelings of sadness and regret I beheld the dawning of day. The story of Mullah Hussein's feats of heroism that laid the foundation of the growth of the faith is well documented. One feature that stands out in these stories are his absolute obedience to the instructions of the Bab and before him even his teachers, Sheikh Ahmad and Seed Kazim. We must recall that the journey to reach the gates of Shiraz in 1844 began with unwavering and unquestioning commitment by Mullah Hussein. There is little literature on this period of time about Mullah Hussein's 1,500-kilometer journey from Karbila to Najaf to Bushir and then to Shiraz. I'd like to end with a song composed about how he might have felt during this time, searching for his beloved. The song is called Arise. Thank you and allow upon. Northern star leads my feet Prayers guide my way The day grows close, I know My heart grows keen My soul it aches to Yeah.